Making it to the tip of Cape York would have to be on every four-wheel driver's bucket list. And I'll tell you what, the old telegraph track, that's got to be one of the most popular ways of getting there. Here at Bramwell Junction, you can see the start of the OTT over there, but we've heard of another route. This could be not only the most exciting, but also the best kept secret on the Cape. Yes, yes! Joining me on this trip is the editor of Action himself, Mr. Sean Whale. He is, of course, in his beloved 60. There is absolutely nothing that gets between that man and his four wheel drive. Go you good thing! Also joining us is Mr. Jamie Hazelden of Jamie's Touring Solutions. He is once again in his beast of a Land Rover Defender. It's both Sean and Jamie's first time up here, and everyone is chomping at the bit. It's hard to believe that the trip we're about to embark on is pretty much unheard of in the four-wheel driving community, and it hasn't been driven in a four-wheel drive for 20 years. We decided to camp the night at Bramwell, so we could go over our plans one last time. Well, lads, like anything Cape York related, two days later, and we're finally in position to strike down here, as you know, at Bramwell Station. I'm not telling you anything you don't know there. All the way up, it's pretty standard up until about this point. Then we're going to head the 27 k's off the development road into Captain Billy's Landing, where we have all three of us agreed on a 60 k run north to Usher Point. One of the biggest issues we had, and Sean, you were involved in this heavily, was was getting permission off national parks in order to track yeah. north because every single thing you will read suggests that you can't go north from there. But um, even national parks themselves say that it's open. They're thinking of closing it, yep. but it's still open. But it's open. I think the main thing that they don't want people to just willingly give it a go. Yeah. Because it takes so much planning to get this track right and um, it's not one to just on a Sunday drive and go, no. yeah, let's give this a go because it yeah. takes heaps of planning. We've done months of planning to get this right. Another thing for me though is, and I, I guess this might be something that Perhaps it's a little bit personal, perhaps it's a little bit touchy for some people, but we live in a cotton wool society. Mm -hmm. Everyone we've spoken to has said, you shouldn't be doing this, it's Absolutely, crazy. Yeah. You're gonna, you know, mm -hmm. things are gonna go wrong. First person to climb Everest got told that. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's right. We know the risk, we've done the research. I say we go for it, what do you boys say? And I love the challenge. I've come across this sort of ground before on different areas of Fraser that's shut off now. Yeah. So we've got to be really aware of it and be careful of it. No, no just suddenly stopping. Yeah, yeah, You've got to yeah. keep the momentum going. The fact that you weigh about 19 tonne. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest issue. Super swampy through here. You know what that means in this part yeah. of the world? Oh yeah. Big Lots crocs. crocs yeah. Big crocs. Lots of them. If we're, if we're following this little blue line, we're going to have crocs to the east and crocs to the west of us. That's right. Yeah. That's pretty heavy stuff when it comes to campsites. We've got to watch each other's back yeah. 100% yeah. Yeah. all yeah. the way through this. Now here's the thing, bit of a surprise for you. Yeah. We ain't just going to continue up the bypass and go and walk up to the tip. That's too easy. That's way yeah. too easy. Right. Ain't going to do that. Right. Shauna, you can drive a boat. Of course again. Yeah? Yeah. Got to be a surprise. I've got a boat waiting for you. We're going to jump in that. We're then going to put all the way around. We're going to do the tip by boat. Count me in. Serious. <laughs> now that was kept under the hat. Yeah. Sounds like an adventure. Right. That is an Once event. in a lifetime, friends. I'm in. Yep. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. The next morning, we did the usual things like refueling, cleaning out our air filters. Ah, and Jamie made a last minute call to his insurance company. If it's written off for sake of argument, is that replacement vehicle or replacement value? That's right. There's a few accessories on it. And then we were off. Looks to me like we've reached the turn off. Here we go, 30 k's in. Let's see how we go. Sounds good, mate. My heart's going, I'm excited. I just want to get down to the coast and take a look. This is just awesome. It's what I live for. Let's cop a load of that. Captain Billy's Landing. What a sight to see, eh? Isn't that beautiful? Red dirt to sand, how's that? What more can you ask for? How about we head down there? Mate, try and hold me back. Let's go. Does anyone know what them islands are out there? Yeah, it says it on GPS. Hannibal Isles, the ones to the northeast. Yeah, right.
Of course, our first challenge is seeing whether there is a way to actually drive onto the beach at all. Yep, that's the spot. Before we hit the soft sand, we're letting a lot of air out of our tyres. I want to let them straight down to about 15 psi all round. My figure sand's going to be really soft and I'm not going to take any chances. And then it was time. Righto boys, about to drop onto the beach for the very first time. Here we go, eh? Let's give it a whirl, mate. Beach. How was that, mate? Oh, mate, no, she is beautiful. Come on down. <laughs> on the beach, mate. That's the way. After months of planning and preparation, of dreaming at this moment, it feels fantastic to finally be on the beach. further north today. Yeah mate, we've got to be on our ball with those tides. If those cliff lines come right down to the edge like it looks like they do, that could be uh, that could be us for the day, mate. Oh, there's the worst spots to wait for a tide to change. Absolutely. And before you know it, our first encounter with the tide is upon us. Pretty deep. Starting to get a bad feeling about this. Righto guys, keep these sticks on your left. It's a good firm base, but do not stop. Let's get across this, that tide's coming in. Yeah, she's moving in fast now. What's it like, mate? Real good, real good. I'm gonna scout ahead, guys, and see if I can find a line off here. No worries, mate. You're right there, Sean, eh? Oh, she bogged a little bit towards the end there, mate, but you shouldn't have a drama. Coming through. Until you see this, boys, game over. No go by the looks of it. Absolutely no deal. Yeah, no, look at that water even up there. If you did make it past here, it just washed straight up there. You'd be caught between a rock and the tide. Between a rock and a, between a, rock and a wet place? That is insane. Yeah, you can really see you could run into problems. There you go, it's just washed over the rocks in front of me. All right. Well, guys, there's no way we can continue on. We might have to try and find somewhere to camp. What do you say? Yeah, mate, I reckon we turn around and get off this um, headland. So that's what we do. This is a real reality check for us. We thought we'd get in at least another hour's drive today. We find a cutaway into the dunes to set up camp. It'll provide some protection from the wind and is just far enough from the water to keep us safe from the high tide.
We get the fire going and have a good feed. Now, whilst we're not really talking about it, we all have that tide in the back of our minds. To get past that headland tomorrow, we're going to need a very low low. Four Wheel Drive Supercenter's motto is quality products at wholesale prices. Many customers ask how Four Wheel Drive Supercenter can sell quality products at lower prices than most competitors. The reason is simple. Many other four wheel drive companies rely on a middleman or independent dealer whose commission adds to the final price tag. Because four wheel drive supercenters sell only through the web and company owned stores, they can offer wholesale prices direct to you. Take a look at all our quality products and our wholesale prices direct to the public at www.fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au or visit one of our stores. After a windy night camped on the beach, we're keen to get a move on this morning and see whether it's possible to make it any further up the coast. Low tide is forecast for around 11am. Now we're half an hour early, but we're hoping that the tide has receded enough for us to cross those rocks. Struis, look at this place. Yeah, wow. That's completely different from yesterday. Now <laughs> you didn't see any of that coffee rock yesterday, did you? That's like chalk and cheese. That's amazing. So just up ahead there, there's a stack of water. Is it worth um, walking through it or do you reckon you just drive that? Look, I'm pretty confident through here. This is all just rocky. This is really good driving through here, but up ahead, we're going to have to stop and get out and have a look here. I just went for a walk and when you get onto the rocks, the tide's still up pretty high and it's going to be lapping at your vehicle. And um, I won't even tell you about what's around the corner. We go, is, it, is it worth driving it or? It's worth driving this bit, but I'm not sure about the second bit. If we get far enough down here and we can't go any further, coming back could be a big issue. Because we've had the bottom of the tide now, it's coming back up now. I think once we're in, we're in. This next section could be really hairy. The waves are crashing up and over the actual rocks that we'll be driving. It's pretty good through there, Sean. Ooh, ah. That's a pretty weird experience driving through there. Yeah, it just doesn't look right, does it? Very cool. This water's starting to come up quickly. Tell you what, mate, my heart is in my mouth. Yeah, that piece right on the edge there, that's one of the more committing bits of driving I've done. She's an eye opener, isn't it? What on earth are we getting ourselves into? Hey, I'm just picking my way through these rocks right close down by the water. I tell you what, the size of these oysters, they've gone from being the size of your thumbnail, almost palm size down here, some of these. Yeah, I can see a few little corkers there amongst them, eh? Just tell me, how could you pass this up? Try that out. A little bit of lemon on yours, mate? Oh yeah, absolutely. You can't get better than this, can you? Tell you what, that's the best oyster I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> Utterly sensational. Tell you what, driving over this reef shop like this, just sublime. You really feel, I don't know about you blokes, but really feel like I'm the only one out here, which I guess we sort of are. Yeah, it does feel pretty untouched. There's not too many places in Australia that are like this. Hey, Jamie, yeah. get away to this cowrie shell, mate. Oh, I like them, but that's not a shell, mate. This is a shell. <laughs> hey, what have you got? <laughs> hey, I that's found a, it tucked underneath. That's, one a of the... that's a Nautilus shell. You know, yeah. what lives in there is a dirty great big squid, and they live about 2,000 feet deep. No, really? Out off the shelf. That's yeah, a great right. shell. It's not a shell, boys. <laughs> that's a shell. Wow, that's hey? a shell and a half, isn't it? Look oh, at that thing. Jesus. How old is that? Imagine the thing that come out of it. Well, it's a big snail, isn't it? Big snail, big turban snail. Sort of puts one to shame a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't worry about it, mate. Did you guys have a look at that creek? How did it look to you? It looks shallow, but the other side looks um, really boggy, mate. 
Looks terrible, doesn't it? That's what I was thinking. I think it'd be best just to quickly walk it. See, this high mark here doesn't look too bad. We've reached the mouth Quick of the Kamasadi yeah. Creek, and with the potential for things to go very wrong, we decide yeah. to get out and consider all of our options. Do you want to go for a walk closer down to the beach? Yeah, we might have to stay out, out on the water line. At first glance, it looks relatively simple, but on closer inspection, we're really going to have to be careful about how we approach this. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we've only really got one choice. There's no way we can do this crossing here at the river mouth. I mean, it's, well, it's deeper for one, it's wider, it's boggier. You can see there's a mass of water and sand up through here. There's nothing to winch off. The only other chance we've got is back there. Now, if we get everything ready, put a winch strap on the mangroves ready to go, have you blokes on the other side ready to get that winch across and on as soon as I get stuck so I don't sink in, we might be in with half a chance. Here goes nothing. I've got Shorty in second low, and I'm not hanging around. Come on, Shorty. Whoa, that is boggy through there. That is really boggy through there. I've got to say, I don't think I've ever been this nervous behind the wheel. The 60 looks like she's about to lift off. Oh, Shorno. Sure My vehicle doesn't become a submarine. And I think he's pretty happy about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where I saw you go down. I thought, oh, hang on. <laughs> now, if anyone's going to sink here, it's going to be Jamie and his Defender, which weighs about the same as Shorty and the 60 put together. Get into it. Back off, keep going. Go, you good thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. See him sink down here. <laughs> that is scary stuff, but let me tell you. Look at that. Check it out. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's his wheel track. Yeah. <laughs> That's your wheel track. Yeah, I told you I'd sink. I reckon this is wheel. that cruiser. I reckon it's a defender, mate. No, 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 no. <laughs> it looks like a defender to me. Gee whiz. Oh, there's not much left of it. A little bit of spray, a little bit of WD-40, you'd get that started again, I reckon. <laughs> She'd come good. Well, I'd say the moral to the story is, it probably tried to do what we tried to do, but... Yeah. up here, yeah. instead of going down there. Yeah. I'm so glad we spent the time and walked the whole yeah. thing. So am I, so am I. This could have been us. Do you reckon that'll fit yours? <laughs> it's actually better nick than mine, so... <laughs> <laughs> Tire pressures play a vital role in surviving terrain like this. I've just pumped my tire pressures back up to road pressure, which for me is 35 psi. I thought I'd give a bit of a demonstration as to just what your tires do when you let the pressures down. What I've got here is a tire at 35 psi. Now what I'm going to do is let this tire down to an average beach pressure of about 22 psi and check out the difference in the tread pattern on the ground. Right, as you can see, that has made a big difference, but what if conditions are absolutely abysmal. Let's take this down to 10 psi and check out just how much tread you get on the sand then. All right, well that is a great illustration of the importance that tyre pressures play. For me, however, it's time to get my Cooper STTs back up to my operating pressure here, which is 15 psi, and head on down the road. Hey boys, VMS is telling me we are smack bang on Hunter Creek. Kind of hoping, I guess it was a bit of a silly hope, but I was kind of hoping maybe we'd be able to get across this, but can you see what I can see? You'll see that's not going to happen today. No, nah, not a chance, mate. Hey, have a look at this on the left here, Sean. What do you reckon about that for a bit of campsite? Jamie, what do you reckon? Nah, that'll be spot on in there, I reckon. Oh, yeah, it's like a little oasis, that one. I'll back up and get in there. What do you say? Hey, go for it, mate. This accidental campsite ended up being the oh, wow, best thing that could happen. Creek. Look at this amazing creek. It'd be full of barrow, wouldn't you reckon? It'd be full of croc, wouldn't you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> have a look at the size of this. Look at the falls down here. Look at that. That's the size of my hand. Oh, they're big, aren't they? Snapping handbags, my friend. <laughs> Snapping handbags. It didn't take long for the fish to start biting. Now, if you've ever caught a GT, or giant trevally as they're known, you'd know that they sound a bit more like a pig than a fish. <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, I could sit down and catch these things all day long. All day, every day. I saw him take that as well. Good 
so it's a little cleaning from yeah. about a foot of water. <laughs> Mate, I see you've taken a leaf out of my book tonight. Whacked your swag up on the roof of the truck. Yeah, I'm not going to be the only bugger nah. down on the sand, mate. But... Well, I, I just figured, that what's the tide's going to be just here? Like, literally just here. We're completely safe from the tide, but yeah. that's just, 10 foot from, a, from water's just, edge. Just the crocodiles I'm a bit concerned yeah. about, to be honest. Yep. Sean's going to use that Queenie I caught to make a delicious green curry. It's a thing yep. you do when you can't catch a reasonable tasting fish. <laughs> These aren't stuff. too bad. Oh, they're all right. Cut us a piece of that off, mate, just to try. A bit of sushimi. Sushimi, you're getting flash on me now. Okay, you like that? Let me have a go at that. Thanks, bro. Yeah. It's not the greatest raw fish. <laughs> Queenie's not the best at the best of times. <laughs> In fact, that's pretty average, that piece. Do you actually fit? It doesn't look like you fit in Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you don't, you don't have to scrunch your legs up? No. That's, that's actually the matter of size. It's just that it's wider. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. It's gone up the top there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Mate, that is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Well, I thought we're pretty close to the water this yeah. side. We've got yeah. pigs on that side. Not worried about pigs, but I don't like those snapping hand no, bags. No, no, me neither. No. I'd probably have it hotter. Yeah, it's a bit mild. For me, but we've, we've got to cater for that. What does, what's Jamie like? I don't think thing? he likes the hot. Well, let's keep it like that then. We could surprise him. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy. I'm looking for the fish. Oh, stroke! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he got me thumb. <laughs> what are you thinking? You want some more? <laughs> yeah, 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 hook me up. This campsite came because of an accident, because we didn't make the tide. Yeah. Couldn't make the tide, yeah, yeah. So you know what, we yeah. need to not make the tide more often because this is pretty good. <laughs> we set a few crab nets up in the mangroves this afternoon and it's time to go and check on them. The first net is empty, as is the second, but the third has gone completely missing. Cock must have taken it up there or something. He wanted those crabs way more than we did. <laughs> you get, you get them. As it happens, a croc has already got to one of our nets and dragged it further up the mangroves where we can't get to it. It's all good. Tony, your croc. I'm far more intelligent. Good old Sean, though, casts his lure out in the slim hope that he might hook it. And what do you know? The croc that's taken the crab net is still hanging around. And you would not believe it, he starts following Sean's lure back to the bank. Had to go at it. Had to go at it, yeah. Well, Mr. Croc has lost interest and swum back up the creek. Look at this! <laughs> the things this bloke can do with a lure and a rod. Unbelievable. A mud crab. It's a beautiful morning, and thankfully, the tide has dropped significantly. Hey, Jamie. Yo! Mate, can you do us a favour? Yeah, no drama. Can you charge my battery pack up for tonight, please? You and everybody else's? Who else is using it? What's this oh, one? I've got the camera crew. They've camera just come crew? and got one of their other batteries. Mate, I wouldn't mind getting a setup like this in the GU at home. Can this be done if anyone could come into your store? <sighs> Absolutely. That's what we do. We custom build them. Yeah, right. To suit. Yep, yep, yep. So this runs pretty much the whole truck? Yep. All your electrical needs in one handy spot. That's my power station. And anyone can ask for this. You got it. Can I have it done in the GU? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to do it. Mate, we've just been out and checked the water. It's about that deep. Once we get across this, we've got some of the best beach combing in Australia. Oh, this is the place you said. This yeah, right. This is the place, mate. Let's get packed up and get oh, out of yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Here we go. Feels pretty good so far, boys. Ah, it's as hard as the M3, boys. There's a lot of water around, but the sand is as firm as concrete and really doesn't present a problem. See, that ground is actually quite solid. This is the bit I'm worried about. All right, buddy, put those windscreen wipers on. Hey, that's no problem at all. Yesterday's was worse than that. With Jamie weighing in at just over four tonne, it's no wonder he's careful not to lose momentum. Mate, I'm not taking no chances on this. 
Last night we camped at Hunter Creek, which puts us approximately a third of the way through our 60 kilometre beach run. Hopefully we can make good ground today. All along this section of coast, all sorts of things have been washed up on the sand. Some people would see it as junk and others as treasure. Either way, it's some of the best beachcombing you'll do anywhere. This whole stretch of beach collects a lot of flotsam and jetsam from pretty much all over the world, especially the offshore islands, Papua New Guinea, places like that. And the things you can find out here, truly remarkable. Yesterday we actually found the remains of a dugout canoe. But today, nothing quite as exciting, but I have got a bottle of water. The top is still intact, that's good to go. I'll give that to Sean later on. I've got a Winnie the Pooh peg. I think it's a pen actually. That's for Jamie. Down here I've got the biggest mud crab claw you've ever seen. A Bob Marley lighter. And down here, we've got ourselves an almost usable wheelbarrow. That's not the best bit. Check these out. A pair of thongs. Woohoo! Well, we've got a small creek here guys, I'm going to go down low beside the uh, ocean side here because I think it'll be a lot harder. Coffee Rock is amazing. Well, if you took this at the wrong time, you'd definitely lose the vehicle, that's for sure. have words. I'm going to pop up as far as I can. There might be a, a hidden magical route through here, but oh, gee whiz. Definitely not looking promising. There is no way, <laughs> no way you can drive it from up here. Not at all. We were hoping to make it a heck of a lot further today, but we've reached another hold up. A bit of tucker and good conversation around the fire. We're keen to get back into it tomorrow. Now you can get a two inch road legal lift with the extra flex of up to a four inch lift. That's right, get a two inch lift to make your four wheel drive handle better and avoid driveline problems and still have the flex and wheel travel of a much taller lift. Flexi coils are Australian made using the best quality BHP micro alloy X5K steel available. Flexi coils come in a variety of lifts and load carrying options. The secret is a variable spring rate like many off-road race and rally cars use. Here's what the flexi coils do that the other springs can't. On a normal two inch lift, the shorter shock absorbers limit down travel to stop the coil spring falling out. To fix that, we've removed the standard two inch lift shock and fitted a longer shock that allows much more travel for the flexi coil lift. But here's what happens when you increase the shock length with a normal two inch lift spring. With the extra down travel, the two inch lift coil spring gets loose and falls out. Now watch the GU with the two inch flexi coil lift. These flexi coils here use a machine tapered wire in this section. This does not affect the ride quality or ride height, but the flexi coils expand further and don't fall out with the longer shock absorbers. That way we can use up to four inch longer than standard shock absorbers to increase wheel travel and traction. Watch the difference between normal coil spring suspension and the flexi coils back to back on this track. See how much easier the GU drives this challenge with the flexi coils. The extra wheel travel keeps the tyres on the ground more often, which made the vehicle much more stable and the extra traction helps it drive through much easier. These really are an amazing breakthrough in four wheel drive suspension. If you want to go further off road but stay legal and avoid handling and drive line problems, get flexi coils, only available at suspension stuff. Take a look at the website at suspensionstuff.com.au or call Brad and the expert team on 1300 048 991 to see our amazing prices and special deals on this fantastic suspension. 
the first 20 people to buy a FlexiCoil lift kit for $1,490 get a free 22-inch Illuminator Max LED light bar worth $299. It punches out a massive 12,000 lumens from the 10-watt American-made Cree LED units. IP67 water rated with adjustable mounting points and sleek design. Don't miss this amazing deal. I'll tell you what, when it comes to uh, late night sessions around the campfire, every now and then I get to hear a recipe, hear about a recipe that is just about perfect for the blokes amongst us who uh, don't want to put in too much effort. And as soon as I saw Ben Olsen's recipe, it reminded me straight away of the sort of thing that our editor at Four Wheel Drive Action would just absolutely love. First of all, we start with some four and 20 meat pies. And also in the angle, I've got some cheese. This is actually really nice Swiss cheese, so it's probably a bit Swiss for this restaurant, but uh, we'll get away with it, eh? <laughs> oh, an onion, no worries at all. Um, some chili sauce. Oh, you like chili oh, sauce. Like chili sauce. <laughs> and of course, we've got some barbecue sauce. Now, get a load of this. First thing we do, according to Ben, take out a, settle, settle, no pies yet. They're still frozen, all right? So we take out a couple of pies. And then we gently, very, very gently, chop the top off it. And then, of course, we need an implement. Why? Because we're going to drill some holes in the pie. Why are we doing that? Because it's still pretty solid. There you go. Well, we didn't find any oil, but um, we've drilled a nice pattern of holes in it. She's a monster, this little thing. Okay, next trick is the barbecue sauce. And you guessed right, it goes into the holes. Look at that. How easy is that? After that, of course, we need a really big super dab of our chilli sauce. Now, depending on who you're with, yeah, well, lots of chilli sauce. <laughs> and then, a slice of onion. I'm liking this one already. <laughs> you are liking it. I'm liking this one. This is a beauty. There we go. Just get a little bit of onion on there. A bit of cheese. You can tell from the ingredients that this is going to work really well. Pop the crust back on. Whoa! Don't go shy on the alfoil because we're about to lob this into the fire. I reckon it's going to take about, oh, possibly four or five beers. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Before this one's ready. But that's all right. Put lots of alfoil around it. Now comes the tricky bit. What do you reckon of that? Mate, this is a fair dig of Mozzie Meal. <laughs> this is so Aussie, it's not funny. I've knocked up a few more here, and um, I moved them over to the side of the fire because it was pretty hot there right in the middle. I don't think it did them any harm, but when I saw the smoke, I started to get worried. Okay, whoa, whoa, bit of heat in these babies. Let's see how we went with that. Are you game, mate? I am. <laughs> oh, I tell you what. I'm looking forward to this. Whoa, look at that. Oh. Oh, that's magic. Am I allowed to have a go at that? <laughs> mm, we'll see what this one. No, go on, mate. Go on, give it a try. Oh, wow. Ben Olsen from down the south coast of New South Wales, mate. It's a beautifully simple recipe. You've probably led thousands of Aussie males well and truly astray. But I love it. It's good. For the first time ever, stream or download your favourite DVDs and save them to your personal collection forever. Four-wheel drive action digital DVD. It's your ticket to the best parts of Australia without having to leave your lounge room. Want to get the four-wheel drive action DVDs you're missing? Or use them to plan your next trip? Don't miss this very special offer. Purchase any five digital DVDs of your choice from our huge online library for only $29.90 and get a free quickie tyre deflator worth $29. Or get 10 digital DVDs online for only $49.90 and get a free 8,000 kilogram Hercules snatch strap worth $49. Jump online now to grab these great deals. 
www.fourwheeldriveaction.com.au slash digital hyphen mags. Now, as nice as a sleep-in would have been, I just can't pass up the opportunity to photograph this area before the harsh light of the sun is upon us. Low tide is an hour later every day, which makes today's low tide at 1pm. We have quite a bit of time to kill before then. Got him! You see them in a natural habitat like this, they're beautiful. I'm gonna let this one go. Let's get your camera crew to move out of the way. Get out of the way, boys. We'll let him go down here. <laughs> yeah. I think we've been shipwrecked too long. <laughs> yeah, been here too long. <laughs> After a while, I think that sun started to get to us. For oh, me at least. <laughs> It's midday now, which is an hour earlier than low tide, but it appears that the water has dropped enough. Now the plan this morning is to get around this headland, down the beach, and then tackle the intimidating Orford Bay. That's gonna be the critical point for us because from Orford Bay, we actually have to cross the bay out to sea. We cannot hug the coastline. If we can get across that, then we should be in with a chance. We should be able to continue on all the way through to Usher Point tonight. I like the sound of it, mate, let's get into it. I reckon my rear bar is going to hit on this ledge. I reckon a little too, Sean. Just be, take it easy, eh? Uh, you're all clear, Sean, all clear. How's your rear overhang in that one, Jamie? I got a real long overhang. I'm going to actually take it on a different angle to what you're doing. The good thing about a 60 is you can just point and drive. I've actually noticed you've been doing that a lot. <laughs> hey guys, where I'm stopped right now, this is where we wet a line last night, Sean, eh? So Shorty would be 100% underwater. Yeah, you're not wrong, mate. You might want to pick up my lure for me. Well, I'm up to three three lures I've found. You'll be able to open a fishing tackle store when you get home, mate. How are you going through there, Jamie? Yeah, no, we're just about through. What a beast. And now it's a race against the clock. We've only got a four hour window of opportunity until we face high tide once again. See that spit of land jutting right out to our right hand side over there? Yep. That my friends is Usher Point. Finally, finally getting there. Yeah, don't speak too soon mate, because we're actually going to be coming up in the next uh, couple hundred metres, half a K, onto Orford Bay. And that could be the showstopper. Once we eventually arrived at Orford Bay, Sean was poking about the mangroves when he made a very exciting discovery. This is a little cross that's been put up here in February of 1976. Kind of gives me a bit of a lift in spirits. I really, that's, that's a good omen. They only got as far as we did right now. <laughs> or, they, or, they, or they made it, one of the two. <laughs> Orford Bay is the main section that we have been warned about. Out here, we're going to be forced to drive on the ocean floor for two and a half kilometres. A recovery out here would be nearly impossible. It would be a three kilometre drive around the edge of the bay, but apparently the sand is so soft that even in a quad bike, it's only a matter of time before you end up in a sinkhole. Come here, trusty old hat. If we don't cross the ocean floor, our only option is to turn back. Alrighty boys, here we go. I tell you what, this feels completely weird, but there is no other way across. Let's cross our fingers. Go for it, Graham. Give it heaps, mate. My heart is pounding through my chest right now. Yeah, it's a few soft bits. The ocean feels so close on my right-hand side, and knowing that within a couple of hours, that deadly salty water will cover the ground I'm on, it's almost too much to handle. Wow, yeah, that's a lonely drive by yourself, mate. You're not wrong, I'm trying to pick a way through these bigger crossings too is a bit sketchy. It's a 
bloody long way to get bogged. I'm just going to say the same thing, it's a long way to get across there. Some of these crossings are quite deep. <laughs> Jeez, I can barely see Shorty now, mate. I'm starting to feel hopeful. The end is in sight. I might just make this. <laughs> my heart is in my mouth. If I don't make this crossing, I've lost a 60. It's simple as that. Sean has to be vigilant about not driving in my wheel tracks. The 60 is heavier than Shorty, and it won't take as much to go down. How's it feeling, Sean? Oh, I'm getting out of this area, it's really boggy. My heart is in my throat at this stage. If Sean A gets bogged, I just don't know what our next course of action can be. The relief, I tell you what, this is awesome. <laughs> the fact that Jamie, however, is the one most at risk out there is something I'm trying not to think about. We lived! Righto, well it's my go now. With the weight of this truck, if I sink down in this sand, what will happen is it'll suction cap to the sand and there is just no way of recovering the vehicle. We haven't got a vehicle strong enough here and the distance we've got to actually pull at to actually pull this vehicle out. So if I sink, there's no recovering this vehicle. And that's the harsh reality of it. If Jamie's 4.3 tonne of Defender goes down in this wet sand, the suction effect that will take hold of the chassis means that even Shorty and the 60 together won't be able to pull her out. That was a deep one. Just those hesitations that grab you and they can stop you really, really quickly. You take the wrong gear, it's all over. Woohoo! I can see you now. Come on, Jamie, you can do it. That was a real worry for me, I've got to say. Woohoo! Yes, we're through. <laughs> well, guys, according to the VMS, there's another big creek coming up up here. According to the research, she could be a showstopper. Well, eventually we did come across that river, and it was a little bigger than we had anticipated. Or a lot bigger. Jamie. How'd you go? Well. It's pretty deep. Yeah. The news ain't great. No way that way. Oh, well. What forget about it up there. That tide's yeah, racing that's... in. That's yeah, off. Oh. I was standing on there and it came up around my feet. Yeah, yeah, it's pushing. In no through. time at all. It's coming up high today, it's only three metres today, too, nearly. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, with no choice but to camp in one of the most beautiful places you can imagine, let's see what this beautiful river has to offer. Go, hey, Jamie. Just go easy on him. Go. Come on, buddy, up you go. Oi, settle down, tiger. Inspired by our success fishing off the bank, we're convinced we're going to do just as well with the crab nets. There's one, over here. Straight in. That's perfect, mate. What's going on there, dude? That's the outboard. It's not the time, nor the place. Yeah, no, she's gone. It's got a pretty sad idle on it. Yeah, right. Where's our bait? No bait, no crabs. The outboard motor on Jamie's tinny keeps giving us trouble. This is certainly not the ideal place for that to happen. Hey, 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 hey. It's not comforting when you hear that, is it? I'm right in the mangroves. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a rope around the engine. Is it? Yep. You serious? Yep. This is not the spot I wanted to be doing this. Can you keep an eye out for Crocs? Just keep, keep an eye out for any eyes, mate. This is not a good feeling, let me tell you. How are we looking, how are we looking back here? I'm not liking this. 
Yeah, there's one. Hey! That's what I like to see. It's a male too. Male. I'll take him. <laughs> hey! What's, oh. that, what's that noise? Is that eyes? Whoa! Dude. That's, that's a croc. I saw it. Little croc! Let's catch him. And the chase is on. Oh, yeah, buddy! <laughs> what a trip this has been. I mean, I, it's kind of hard to even, to even talk, to even try and tell you what I'm feeling right now because this is everything to me. This is why I own a four-wheel drive vehicle and this is why I do the trips that I do. Look at him, will you? Give him a few years and I would not even think of grabbing him out of the water. But right now, that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at him. What a little machine. Oh, this is a big one. And when you get these big claws, it's best just to just crack them. Let's the flavour infuse into the into the crabs. Now I've got to clean the crab. You can see all that white stuff is meat. All that yellow stuff is um, crab gut. So we'll get rid of all that yellow stuff. What we're going to make today is some um, chili mud crab. It's got the hot oil in there at the moment. Just chuck these crab bits in. Next vital ingredient is chilli paste. They yeah, don't hold back on this stuff. A fair bit of that in. Bit of garlic. First we'll mix that around. It's mixed together pretty good. Chuck a bit of water in. Not too much. Heat set on pretty high. Now I'll put the lid on. Give it a stir every now and again. And um, in about 15 minutes, it should be ready. I think she's ready. If that smells in here, go boy. What have we got in here? Oh, have a go with that. That looks about perfect. And this, folks, is what we call a Queensland lollipop. If all the blokes get here, I think I'll um, see what it's like. That is sensational. Mmm. Oh, I don't know if I want to tell the blokes who cook this. It's getting close to that time now. We want to be packed and ready to go as soon as that tide is low enough to move. Well, that's if it gets low enough. Well, mate, I, you locked down here, didn't you? Well, only because... There's a tree to winch off. Doesn't look the shallowest though. No, it's not the shallowest. <laughs> so Jamie and I, as you just saw, took the boat down here. Yep. Doesn't look much better. <laughs> but the good news is it's heaps shallower down there. Yeah. Max depth would be about like, absolute yeah. max would be waste. What's the bottom like? Well, not, not great. You do not want to stop. Just it not that stuff that you sink up to your knees the first no. time. No, 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 no. It's hard, it's hard. No. But the other negative is <laughs> the entry is not flat. You've got to come down into it and then gun it across. So you lose all your revs before you you're done yeah, it. You can't, in, no, you'll, you'll be going, going in to idle second low. Yeah, yeah right. No. And then give it to it <laughs> yeah. and go. So you won't be going in with a splash. No. Yeah. So. Airborne 60, look out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. And of course, if we don't make this crossing, we don't get to the tip. And that's what we yeah, came here for. That's right. There's a will. Yeah. There's a way. There's a Absolutely. way. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, boys. Let's put everything into practice and give this a go. What do you say? Yeah, far away, mate. Yeah, she's pretty bumpy and foggy out here. 
go, you good thing. That's excellent. Oh yeah, give me a big yeah. Mate, that's sensational. It gives me a lot of confidence. Well done, mate. All right, here we go. It's not too bad. Oh, foggy. Come on. Come on. That's awesome, mate. Beauty. How good's that? <laughs> Well, the other guys have made it now, and uh, it's going to be my challenge now. So, uh, here we go. Woohoo! Go you good thing! Go you good thing! Yeah! Bikes, I've got to be honest, there's been times where I thought we weren't going to get this far. I've got to say, I had no idea whether we were going to make it on some of that soft stuff that we've been across. I'm going to make a pretty big call to you guys and say this is on a par with the single most epic trip I've ever done. Without a doubt, it's the most epic trip I've ever done. It is for me too. I mean, nothing even comes close. And here we are, mate. We've made it. Usher Point, our final destination. This feels bloody unreal. No dramas, guys. Come on up. Oh, boys, I am on Usher Point. They said we couldn't do it. They said it couldn't be done. And I've just driven on to Usher Point. <laughs> to the tip. Nothing can stop us now. We drove the long three hours out of Usher Point and headed towards Loyalty Beach. Well, we made it to Loyalty Beach last night and after a great night's sleep in the swags, we're ready to start the final leg of our journey. Now, as Jamie's tinny isn't quite cut out for the waves of the Arafura Sea, Patsy and Sue from Loyalty Beach have been really kind enough to lend us their boat, the Yarpy. <laughs> this is going to be a fitting end. That's it, boys. Woo! Tip of Cape York. Tip of Australia. Bring it on, mate. Northernmost point of Australia. Here it is. Up the tip. How good is this? Who wants to touch it first? Try it on me back. <laughs> Go on, mate. Look well done, moment. lads. Top yeah. effort. What Absolutely a top, top effort. effort. Yeah. Gotta have a photo while you jump in there. Smile for the camera. Well, everybody's heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. I don't care if you're an avid four-wheel driver or not. This picture right here represents so much. I tell you, this ranks as one of the most rewarding trips I've ever done. I really do feel a great sense of achievement standing right here, the tip of Australia. But folks, it doesn't matter how you get up here, just make sure you stand right here at some point in your life. Maybe I'll see you here, maybe I won't, but where I will see you next is on four-wheel drive action. When you head up to the tip of Cape York, make sure you stop in at Loyalty Beach Campgrounds. They're some of the best you're going to find. Rear drawers are at the top of most four-wheel drivers' wish lists, but high prices put them out of reach for many people. The new Titan rear drawer system comes with quality inclusions like double roller bearings, 90 bearings in total. Look at the strong galvanised steel frame, 
and top grade marine carpet. The inside is also lined. To save you a few hundred dollars, they come with a built-in fridge slide, which is an optional extra on many other brands, with sturdy tie-down points. The strong locking mechanism is protected and fully sealed on the inside, so your cargo won't get caught in it. They're an easy one-person DIY fit in under three hours, and come complete with everything you need to install them. Side wing infill panels make them suit a wide range of models. Compare the quality with any on the market. For a limited time, get a free Hercules Complete Recovery Kit worth $249 with every Titan rear draw system, including side wings and fitting kit, for only $1,499. Offer ends 30th of November 2014. Buy online at www.fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au. Call 1800 883964 or in stores. G'day, my name's James, this is my 4.2 turbo diesel Nissan Patrol. At the front of my Patrol, I have a factory Nissan winch bar, which I've powder coated silver and hammer tone to blend into the vehicle. In the middle, I have four light force spotlights, two XGTs, two 170s, which are HID'd. Then following down, I have a VRS 9,500 pound winch. When designing the custom side steps on my Patrol, we had to integrate the six LED side markers on each step, plus the LED light system underneath the vehicle. On the back of my patrol, I have a spare 35 inch tyre, also a custom bracket that holds my two CB antennas and my light force reversing lights. On the roof, I have a full length Tracklander roof rack. This holds my Foxwing awning, my kangaroo jack, and all the extra recovery gear I take when we go out for driving. My patrol has a set of 315-75-16 Procon X-Terrain tyres. To handle the size of the tyres, I've replaced the factory suspension with a Tough Dog adjustable 4-inch change in the shocks, coils, panard rods, steering arm and put in a heavy duty steering dampener in the front. I have a 4-inch stainless steel snorkel which flows into a stainless steel airbox to help the motor breathe better. I've replaced the factory turbo with a custom built TDO5 turbo, add in a top mount cross country intercooler and a custom inlet manifold. Inside my patrol, on the pillar, I have a pyro gauge to let me know the exhaust temperature, a boost gauge and an oil pressure gauge. Moving down to the centre console, I have a dual battery system to let me know what battery is doing what. I also have a red arc low coolant alarm. Within the next 12 to 18 months, I'd like to take the family up through to Kimberley and see the Bungle Bungles. We've made it cheaper and easier than ever before to become a part of the Full Drive Action family. We've developed pay-as-you-go subscriptions. Get Full Drive Action magazine and DVD, the digital version, delivered straight to your iPad. You simply pay as you go. Now when you think about it, that's the cost for a meat pie and a can of Coke every three weeks. And guess what? You can cancel any time. But I doubt you're going to want to cancel when you see what we've got in Full Drive Action Digital. Hi, my name is Alexis. This is my JK Jeep. I uh, purchased this around March 2009. My wife and I both bought one. Originally I got a black ARB front bull bar fitted, some protection underneath for the arms. I also got a winch fitted after my friend and I once got stuck in Mundari. I've got a number of lights set up on the vehicle. There's uh, two HIDs on the front. On the top there's uh, two uh, KC little uh, lights. In addition I've got a uh, marine light which is remote control that can actually swivel up and down and 360 degrees around. The kids play with it as we're driving along and things like that. Because of the nature of my work, I work together with the military and the WA police. And I wanted a vehicle that could blend into the environment and be a bit of a homage to the environment within which I work. So the reason why I chose the Ozcam Desert Sand rather than a khaki green, because in my opinion, green cars are unlucky. The suspension kit setup I've currently got on the Jeep is the Rancho Short Arm Conversion. It gives a four inch lift and it's uh, fully flexible shocks. On the inside, uh, the whole vehicle is set up with uh, molly pouches. So we've got a center bar, where I've got a torch and my CB radio. I've got a first aid kit, a couple other bits and pieces. And then the two front seats have got full molly kits through that. 
And then the very back in the tailgate, I've got some more molly pouches where I keep a jet boil and food. I always have a ration pack in my car just in case I break down and I'm hungry. The truck performs really well off-road. I've got to say, it just will creep up anything and I'm very, very satisfied. On-road, the vehicle um, did have a lot of head shakes initially, um, but Full Drive USA sorted those out for me by fitting some extra components and that's um, totally changed the vehicle's drive. It's just beautiful on road now, I'm very satisfied. Well, we've got a property down in Bridgetown and we take the Jeeps down to Bridgetown quite a lot, go off road through there. We also, uh, I do the power line track a lot um, with my friend Derek. We go up through there and have a blast on the weekends. My wife comes sometimes with, the, with her yellow Jeep and we, we have a ball. The new Dominator four-wheel drive exhaust by Berkeley are Australian made in Ballarat. Berkeley's 52 years of exhaust manufacturing and design combined with decades of off-road experience to bring four-wheel drivers a purpose-built exhaust for more power and torque, better fuel economy and long life. Watch how this new premium exhaust system ticks all the boxes. They're purpose-built for turbo diesel four-wheel drives and off-road use with three-inch thick wall tube, heavy-duty hangers and a reinforced muffler. For long life, we use premium 409 grade stainless steel for the pipe, high flow catalytic converters and high performance mufflers as well. We stand behind our Australian made premium exhaust with a 5 year warranty on 409 stainless systems and a 3 year warranty on aluminised steel systems. Berkeley have pioneered their special pipe through flange design which offers simpler, more accurate fitment and even better gas flow. For improved throttle response, acceleration and drivability for off-road and towing performance, all dominated by Berkeley exhausts, a three inch diameter and mandrel bent with a large diameter dump pipe included straight from the turbo. All systems include EGT, pyro and oxygen sensor bosses welded in. We use 10 millimeter thick four bolt flanges with heavy duty gaskets and specially designed heavy duty premium quality hangers. They're designed for an easy, precise DIY fitment at home. With dyno proven power, torque and fuel economy gains, a new Dominator turbo diesel four-wheel drive exhaust is one of the biggest bang for your buck mods you can make, especially at four-wheel drive supercenters wholesale prices direct to the public. Our prices include the complete DIY system with everything you need to fit them all in short lengths for ease of freight to anywhere in Australia. Buy in-store, online at fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au or call us for more information on 1800 88 39 64. Hi, I'm Matthew, and this is my 1990 Mitsubishi Pajero. On the front end of my Pajero, I have an ARB winch bar with dual 220 roue lights on the front with a 1.2 meter, 6 decibel GME antenna. On top of my Pajero, I have a roof rack with a 40 inch LED light bar, a Pinnacles camper awning and Pinnacle camper rooftop tent, and a shovel and high lift jack holder. On the back of my Pajero, I have my custom rear dual carrier that I built, holding the uh, 33 by 10 half BF all terrains with spring loaded slam locks and LED lights. For the wheel and tire combo on my Pajero, I'm running 33 by 10 half inch BFG all-terrains on 15 by 8 inch negative 22 offset row wheels. The suspension setup on the Pajero, 41 mil foam cell tough dogs front and rear and 50 millimeters of lift via heavy duty springs in the back and crank torsion bars in the front. The interior of the Pajero houses a GME TX3100 UHF, a Kenwood deck with four and a half inch fusion speakers under the dash, and a aftermarket temperature gauge just to keep a better eye on the diesel. The back of the wagon, I have a barrier built to stop any unwanted objects from ending up in the cab. And then I have a false floor all the way to the back of the front seats, where in the middle I have storage, a 53 liter water tank, the ARB compressor mounted, an electrical box to keep everything high and dry. And then in the back, I have dual sliding drawers to house all my stuff with a 80 liter Waco sitting on top. Factory My Pajero came with a V6 3 liter petrol with an automatic transmission. For a little bonus in fuel economy and just some better download torque, I've swapped it for the 2.5 liter turbo diesel intercooled motor Mitsubishi offered with a five speed manual transmission just for a little better control on the downhill descents. 
I came over to Australia originally for a taste of adventure and I, uh, I definitely found it and the Pajero definitely helped us get around Australia safely and efficiently. Uh, right now we try to get out at least once a month and go for at least a weekend jaunt um, at the nearby uh, trails. You may have noticed a koala on the front of the Pajero that was put there by the previous owners uh, as a good luck charm. So we decided not to remove it and it seems to be working quite well as we've always made it home from any remote trip without anyone getting hurt or a vehicle breakdown. We've been working harder than ever in the research and development to bring you our 2014 range of trailers, the Black Series. Starting with the ever popular semi off-road, the lightweight extreme off-road, the commando models, the new modular Alpha and Delta models, through to our fantastic new range of hard floor campers comprising of the fashionable Emperor rear fold, the state-of-the-art Dominator forward fold, and our flagship rear fold, the Phoenix, Jump online and check out the most informative and interactive website in the industry. Uh, Melanie, the convoy is standing by. We're ready for the first take of the first DVD for this year's Cape York Adventures. Over. OK, roll mate. <laughs> Cape York would have to be on every four-wheel driver's bucket list. This could be one of the most... What? <laughs> we'll set up your four-wheel driving camper for your camping needs. Yeah, more enthusiasm. At Jamie's Touring Solution. <laughs> and they've given us a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to put into the patrol. First we got one. First we got one. <laughs> I can actually do a trick. Ready? Yep. Oh, g'day! <laughs> Faces you see in here. <laughs> I can't wait till Jamie Oliver sees this one. He'll try to steal it. <laughs> He'll steal it. Quiet! Now there's not much point putting him in here. <laughs> oh my god! We can offer you... Oh, I've got to look at that first, don't I? <laughs> How exciting is this? I... Whoops, that's going to kill you. And they've just dropped us off a full bar, a roof rack, and an awning. Not only is the patrol going to shut up. Sean was actually going to be a dentist before he became a journalist. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, his career was somewhat short lived. Man, <laughs> 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 you walked out of my foot. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> You've got enough to worry about except bloody road mud crabs. <laughs> well that anchor well doesn't <laughs> doesn't anchor very well. Now we're right outside Ian's house, he's still got no idea what we've done. I've got it, Jamie! I've got it! Oh. Even though mind you oh. <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> And I will definitely be back. Maybe I'll meet you here, maybe I won't but it doesn't really matter because I'm just starting to ramble. And if I start rambling, <laughs> rarely do I stop. You can keep your fancy restaurants, you can keep you going out to the movies, get yourself in a tinny, get yourself an outboard that actually keeps going. <laughs> That's all the time to when, stop. When you're in a croc infested waterway, oh dude, and get out of here because I tell you what, this is living. The new CFX50 is a product of years of research and development tested in some of the toughest four-wheel drive conditions known to man. It incorporates a solid construction and uses the latest technology which makes this one of the most powerful yet efficient fridges on the market. The new CFX50 boasts a stylish yet extremely practical design. To see why I and many other four-wheel drivers only use the new Waco CFX fridge freezers, visit www.waco.com.au.